Hello everyone, so I'll be showing how I made this uh, painting all inside Grita. So this is half like a 3D render, but I didn't use any 3D software with this one. It's all done inside Grita with the clever use of some 3D filters under Jimmy Cute. So to get started, I'm gonna open Grita over here and I've actually prepared some brushes that you can use. I'll include these in the description if you want to play around with this. But the basic premise is um, if we say set uh, a black square here on the left side and we set a medium gray square on the right side, then another one that's completely white and we run this to uh, under Jimmy QT, then go to 3D extrusion or elevation. Um, for this purpose, I'm going to use extrusion. So under the like default settings, it looks like this, which I don't find particularly useful. I find it useful if I set all of these X, Y, Z angles to 180. Now we have like a flat perspective view. And if I just adjust the X angle, you can see that we're tilting this um, in varying degrees, right? And the magic of it is you can change the depth and you can see how um, the black square, which is on the left side, is now like not receiving any height information while the gray square is receiving a bit of the information and the uh, rightmost square which is the white one is getting like the most height information so with with this in mind we can actually pull off some really interesting 3d um, objects all done inside Krita. so for the first example we're gonna make um, some squares but um, i'm gonna assign uh, instead of like just basic squares, I'm gonna kind of make a city block. So I have made this brush specifically for that purpose. With how this brush works, it kind of um, varies the the height a bit. So you can see we can get like a really dark gray and a really bright gray or like a medium gray um, if I choose the 50% gray. So it varies between uh, being brighter and being darker or just being darker in general. and uh, what I can do is say I want smaller buildings um, like around the perimeter of the city. And while we get closer and closer to the middle, I'll add brighter and brighter building. And right in the middle, I'm going to add the brightest buildings that we can get. So if I run this through the same filter and you can see um, it's kind of smoothed out, which is not what we really want since we want this to be like a city block right we can change the smoothness to be around zero now it's like completely squared off and change the depth to be you know a bit bigger now you can see like the effect that um it's creating and you can change the angle of course using the z-axis changing the angle and also the fov fov um it's kind of like the lens of the camera so if we make this a 90 you can see that it's like making it a bit bigger you know this is like a massive scene while if we make it zero, it's kind of like isometric. Let's use different angle to show the isometric angle. So you can see like it's kind of like an isometric um, grid or drawing. So that's how the FOV work. But um, by using this, you can pull off some really, really interesting um, complex scenes like for the background and stuff uh, just by using this filter and just by creating uh, this kind of layer map in general. Um, if you're having trouble with, say, the light, the light doesn't, you know, um, show much information. So you can see that it's there's kind of like stretching and I don't really want that. You can choose to be flat shaded and you can also change the lighting over here um, if that, you know, gives a different effect on this 3D render. But as a caveat, doing it this way isn't really great for like really, really precise and accurate, you know, 3D renderings. This is just mainly for the background, mainly for to fill some space with lots of detail without really rendering all that detail out by yourself. So it's really great for those like secondary or tertiary elements. And also for this one, um, here is the width and height. So you can see this is a square, right? And um, Basically, this is how it's going to render the image. If I make this like one, you can say it's gonna be bigger. And 
in turn it's gonna render a bigger image but there's uh, a bug with this i'm not sure if it's related to size but if i click okay you can see what we saw isn't um isn't what we got with the render so um i normally fix this by doing it again so going to the filter um uh, for like to make this a bit easier you can add this to favorites 3d extrusion and 3d elevation but anyway let's go back to 3d extrusion um to fix the issue that we had with like not having the proper height um just make the depth like twice or thrice as big so if it's like 600 right now um let's make it like a thousand now it's a bit closer to what we want but yeah that's like the biggest bug that i've found which is the height or the depth is kind of not showing not showing it properly which is too bad but anyway <clears throat> now let's try um let's try the other filter so what i'm gonna do is add a black layer on the on the layer below what i just made um, copy this and merge it so that we have we still have the backup layers then i'm gonna run this through um elevation now you can see we can see the entire plane that it's being rendered and 3d extrusion we kind of see um we kind of see it extrude both upwards and downwards and that's not necessarily what i want um in elevation we can see like the ground plane um but in elevation we kind of need to think about it um inversely so in 3d extrusion the whitest parts are the highest parts well 3d elevation it's kind of like the opposite which i don't really understand why since it's the opposite we can just use a negative value for the factor again you can see we can we get the same effect then um for the for the angle of course i'm gonna use it 180 180 and 180 and that way we start off with the flat plane then i'm gonna tilt this just like this I'm gonna rotate it a bit using the z angle be something like that also um change the smoothing and now we have flat i'm gonna make it flat shaded and now you can see uh we have this kind of like really interesting city block now we can try to render and see if the bug still happens um it still happened so i'm gonna try and like multiply the factor by um by three so we got like 300 when i tried it um let's just make it 900 there we go we got a bit closer to what we wanted of course you can just make the make the depth like oh make the depth of like a um at max value and see if that works but yeah for now that's that's a bug that we just need to live with and i hope that they fix it later on but anyway now we have this really interesting city block that we can use and now we can just you know um sketch on top of this and you know maybe texture some of the buildings um add some windows if like you want or just like keep it like a blurry keep it on a blurry background um as like a cityscape um backdrop but now now that we have like a city um we can also use houses or like um what do you call that triangular prisms instead of squares and that's where my other brushes come in so we've been using like this 3d city block now i'm gonna try 3d houses and it's basically the same thing except this will try to make it uh, a bit more triangular so i'm i'm on a new layer and if i want smaller houses i need to select a darker color and change the brightness to uh, a bit lower to something like minus 80 and now we have like these darker smaller houses now if i want bigger houses or taller houses um, i need to crank this brightness up and also crank um, my color up now we have um, brighter houses and now for the brightest of them all i'm gonna make it like around zero percent and see let's see how it looks like when i put it on the filter um change the factor so we can see it properly and there we have it we actually get um kind of like a village looking place which is really really interesting um we can change the fov make it look a bit more dramatic and actually because of this you can kind of create like i don't know a victorian style village you know with a really pointy um with the really pointy roofs and you know sketch on top of it add some more details and this is the thing uh, it's not really great for 
for the final render it's more like a base for you to draw and paint on top of which is really really great if you're struggling with perspective and similar things in that nature but of course um because of like the bug i need to multiply this by three so i'm gonna make it around 360 something like that then click ok now we have this one which is really really cool now for the last one i want to show so we've been drawing like architectural stuff right um so we've made houses and buildings and now i want to create landscapes and this is where this 3d mountains will come in handy um but for the other ones i've been separating like the 3d object elements layer and like the black layer and merging it later on but for this one i actually want to start on the black layer and paint on that because when you select this um brush its blend mode is going to be on addition because of how it affects like the landscape so to show you what i mean addition is kind of like you're adding height little by little so um i just want to start out um close to gray or like close to black that way i'm only raising the level uh bit by bit say i want to have a small mountain here small mountain there like add a bit of hills and whatnot then if i say you want to have like a bigger mountain i can just stay on like 50 percent gray and below because of how like addition works and to show you what i mean if i use like close to white it's going to be white um really really uh by by just a few strokes right and we don't really want that we want a bit more control so i'm gonna um choose like a lighter dark gray and just add a few strokes in little by little and um with enough times you can actually get to close to pure white but yeah we just want to add a bit more variation on the landscape by, by just adding you know um smaller and smaller variations of dark gray and if you really want say a really tall mountain over here we can also do that now that we have this we can go to filter jimmy qt and there we see like the effect that it has you can see like it's creating a really interesting mountainous like area from this like weird looking pattern we got like a lot of information a lot of interesting details and if you're like a landscape artist you can quickly you know paint over this because all the perspective all the like layout um, of the actual mountain elements is already done for you but yeah anyway since i kind of want it to be something like this you can also change the smoothness of course but you lose a ton of detail because of that that's why i like to keep it you know at zero that way i have that really nice texture but anyway in the factor and if you want it to be something like this then um i'll try to change since we're at like around 200 i need to put it at like 600 then uh, click ok because of that bug that's why i put it at 600 now we have this one i forgot to mention if you want to render it you know really really big and not have to resize it afterwards you can just go to filter um make this to around 2000 pixels click ok of course it's gonna take longer but if you're losing a lot of detail because of how it's being rendered and resized you can just go on ahead and um change those like dimensions and for the last one um since in this example i have like color setup and all that you can actually do the same thing for this one but the issue is if we actually change the color um you actually change the height information as well so that's something to keep in mind but say uh, i'm gonna add a gradient map to this I'm gonna choose maybe this one just just as a start then for the lowest one i'm gonna choose like a blue a, a really dark blue and i'm gonna choose like yeah that could work like a brownish color then this one i'm gonna choose like green color kind of like a bright green color then i can erase these ones um you can see i still kind of kept the brightness so the green is still relatively bright the brown is still relatively bright and um the blue is the um the lowest one so if i merge this and run this through the same filter you can see it's trying to color um the 3d render right now it looks a bit you know weird you can change how it's being rendered say gurod or pong to kind of show a bit of uh, like have the material behave a bit differently more similar to this one where it's all a bit flat um also 
You can also change the shininess. Um, that's part of why it looks a bit too shiny. So I'm gonna I can change um that one to be really really low and go back to flat shaded. And now we kind of have that similar thing with this one where um it's a bit more it's a bit more tame and diffuse, much like how real mountains look. Then of course um make this times three, so we're gonna make it around nine hundred and click OK. Now we have this one. Then you can start painting, you know, add a bit more interesting shapes. Then of course, you know, um, these brushes, these three brushes that I showed, isn't the only one that you can use. You can also um, use more interesting textured brushes. And that's what I actually used over here. That's why I got this like really jagged edge and it made that like really interesting, um, really interesting like landscape formation. Then of course I used like the houses brushes or the village looking area and then i sprinkled some brown and that's how you see those like brown like rocks and stuff so yeah hope this was useful let me know if you use this to any of your artworks in the future and if you've come this far and enjoyed the video um consider giving this a like and if you want to see more videos such as this one um consider subscribing that's it for now bye bye